MEditor's macro language is easy to learn, especially if you are already familiar with JavaScript. You can start creating your first macro today by clicking the red Start Recording button to capture the task you want to automate. Once you've finished, click Stop Recording. Then, click Edit Macro to view the script you just generated. You can view the linked video for a detailed guide on recording macros. When writing macros in MEditor, you can choose between JavaScript or VBScript. JavaScript macros are saved as .jsee files. You can use a macro that is saved to your computer by going to Macros Select. Select the .jsee file. You can then run the macro from the Macros menu or the Macros toolbar. MEditor supports two different JavaScript engines. The older engine, JScript, runs via Windows Script Host. The newer engine is V8, which supports recent ECMA script standards. The exact ECMA script version depends on the version of Microsoft Edge installed on your system. You can choose between JScript and V8 in two ways. First, by selecting your preferred engine in Customize Macros. Or you can write language equals V8 or language equals JScript at the beginning of your macro file. For a comprehensive guide on mEditor's macro language, you can access the documentation at mEditor.org. I'll give you a quick overview of the key objects and commands available in macros. The document object is tied to the document you are working on in the editor. Some useful methods include convert CSV, filter, get line to retrieve a line as a string, and save. The editor object controls the overall editor, not specific documents. For example, you can access configurations through configs, or use methods like batch find in files and open file. Not all editor commands have predefined methods. For these, you can use execute command by ID and pass the command's ID. You can find command IDs on the help page for each command listed under the macro section. The selection object allows you to modify or query the current text selection. For instance, document.selection.text can get or set the selected text. To navigate within the document, use commands like char left, char right, line down, and line up. You can also move the cursor to a specific position using set active point. The window object contains global methods and objects. For example, the status variable or alert method can be used to display output to the user. They are also helpful for debugging your macro. To optimize macro performance, you can set the redraw property to false to prevent the editor from updating the window during execution. This comparison of different redraw settings shows how different the macro execution time is. Redraw is false on the right. The shell object allows you to interact with the operating system. Some examples are create folder, get env for environment variables, and run to start a program. At the top of your macro file, you can include several useful directives. One of these is the language directive, which we mentioned earlier. The include directive adds the contents of another JavaScript file above this macro file. mEditor's JavaScript engine does not support the import declaration for importing modules. However, by using the include directive, you can incorporate popular JavaScript libraries like Luxon for date manipulation. I linked an article in the description that explains how to include third-party libraries in your macros. The V8 engine supports the fetch function to make HTTP requests. This allows you to connect to web services from your macro. This example requests a file from Azure Blob Storage. Macros can call almost any mEditor command, allowing you to automate workflows. The V8 engine allows you to use modern JavaScript syntaxes. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. 
My name is Makoto. Thanks for watching and happy editing.